Warning, this video contains spoilers of the anime in question. If you do not want to see said spoilers, I suggest go watch the anime right now and then come on back. Today I come with you with the choice. Take the red pill and you will enter a anime in-depth look where we look at some of the most impossible and cool science that you will ever see. And take the blue pill, you will- Nah, who am I kidding? You're gonna take the red pill anyway, aren't you? Hey there everybody, welcome to Anime In-Depth Look, where I try way too hard to try to explain impossible anime science to you guys. So anyway, let's start this video with a question. With the next gen video game consoles now out, what is the next step for the entertainment industry, in the realm of video games at least? My answer personally is virtual reality. But, to be fair, this is not a valid answer, due to the fact that virtual reality is basically pretty much already here. You see, I'm an avid fan of the Game Theorist channel, and I take a lot of inspiration from MatPat's Game Theory show, as you can probably already see. Anyway, in one of his most recent videos, he discusses how virtual reality is steaming right toward our living rooms, or man caves, you know, whichever you prefer. Anyway, after watching this video, and by the way you guys, you should probably go check it out too, but, back to the first note. After watching this video, I got to thinking, virtual reality is pretty much here. I mean, we have headsets like the Virtual Boy back in the 80s, and now the Oculus Rift that immerse our sight. TV screens that make more detailed pictures than the human eye can even pick up, as well as having 3D capabilities. Earphones that specify direction, pitch, and volumes of sounds. Motion capture technology used by both the Wii and Kinect that works moderately well. And even a circular treadmill type deal that gives you the ability to walk and run in some of your favorite video games. But my conclusion came down to about the same as MatPat's. We are limited by our bodies, by how we would be able to play the game. Our eyes wouldn't pick up certain details. Our stamina would run low for all the non-runner video gamers out there. And all of our other senses, like smell and touch and taste, would be left out of the picture. <sighs> Whew. Okay, well that was a lot of techno babble. But anyway, now that it's out of the way, let's get to the real reason behind this video. Sword Art Online. The awesome anime that puts gamers into a life or death scenario. Now, I could go into the a big discussion on, you know, the setting and the characters and the themes of the anime, but I'm saving that for another video. Anyway, right now, I just want to talk about the technology and the science that's behind it. To get started, in the anime, it shows that gamers put on a headset that allows them to immerse their minds into the game, while their bodies go into a form of sleep-slash-coma state, Probably more like sleep, I would say. But anyway, this state is not that much different from how they do it in the film The Matrix. In both uh, Sword Art Online and The Matrix, the mind of the user enters the computer while the body is essentially asleep. But I know what you're thinking. How can this be any more immersive than using all those other things you just read off? Well, the answer to that question is best told by... Morpheus himself. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Well, there you have it. Real neuroscience told in a sci-fi movie. The human brain is the most advanced computer in the universe, being able to process data coming from our eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and every single nerve on our body. So in retrospect, what our bodies perceive becomes our reality. All one really needs to do is to change the input of data that's going into your brain. Enter the nerve gear, the VR helmet that players of Sword Art Online wear to connect to the game. Now, in the anime, it is stated that the nerve gear is a high-density signaling device. 
This device serves as the link between the computer game and the brain of the user. This helmet basically overrides the signals that normally come from the body and replaces them with the data from the game, thus creating a reality the player can touch, see, smell, hear, and feel. Pretty much, the high density of uh, the data fields that are going to be going into the brain pretty much block out any other data that the actual physical body would be giving them. Anyway, I'll give you another example. This one is probably easier to follow. Let's say we have a, uh, a cake here. Well, when we see it, smell it, touch it, and taste it, uh, we all get certain emotions out of it. You know, it tastes chocolatey, it smells chocolatey, you know, the texture is moist and soft and all that good stuff. Now, what I'm about to say is pretty much way beyond our capabilities of technology and science as of right now. But in the future, it may not be. So, if you take that data and put it into coding for a cake program, and then have it so that data can enter your brain through the computer, your brain will create the same reaction of that if it were interacting with the actual cake, physically. So instead of being restricted by your body, you would be restricted to how you actually perceive the world. Also on that note, data could also be fed into your brain about your bodily conditions. Using the data from your actual body and the new data provided by the game, let's say uh, MMORPG, the game could create an avatar that could possess skills that your body your physical body would not actually have, such as enhanced stamina, athleticism, flexibility, and dexterity, so it would fit the game profile better. Also, skills that center around combat, such as sword play, going back to the whole sword art online, would pretty much be downloaded into your brain. Not much unlike the skill downloader process from the matrix. Yet, this would probably cause what I call a bleeding effect, and what I mean by that is pretty much this. Take the Assassin's Creed franchise. The protagonist Desmond Miles lives out the lives of his ancestors through the Animus, and due to that, his mind takes on and learns the skills his ancestors had. And since he had the physical capabilities to use those skills, it, he was a master without really having any actual training because his brain had basically downloaded all of the skills that his ancestors had and thus it was just up to muscle memory after that. This would actually explain how the hero of Sword Art Online, Kirito, was able to spar with swords as effectively in the real world than he was in the game because once his body got back to a good physical condition after being in a coma for two and a half years, uh, his mind would have had the data and the muscle memory for his real body to use. In a simple phrase, it's like riding a bike. You never really forget. Alrighty, now that we've discussed how the world would be perceived and how you would move and act in the world, let's get to the big issue. In Sword Art Online, one of the biggest concepts was that if you died in the game, you would die in real life. And in the anime, it is stated that the nerve gear would destroy the user's brain once they had gotten the You Are Dead screen. The way the brain would be destroyed is that the nerve gear would emit powerful microwaves into the brain, basically making the skull a bowl of brain soup. But then I got to thinking, how is this actually possible? There would be countermeasures and safety precautions built into the nerve gear that would overwrite any harmful uh, radiation or microwaves that could actually go into the brain. I mean, we don't really want little Timmy running around with a radioactive skull now, do we? So, how could the game actually kill the player without using any form of microwave? But honestly, the answer isn't all that hard. The Matrix actually states it rather well. The body can't live without the mind. All the game really has to do is convince the brain that the body is dead, and it will stop working, therefore killing the real physical body. Medical studies have shown that after the, a person's heart is stopped and the lungs have ceased all breathing, 
that the brain will actually remain functioning for another 10 minutes. This is what gives doctors the ability to resuscitate people and basically bring them back to life, if you will. But once the person is actually brain dead, it's pretty much game over. Literally. So, if the death of the player was actually caused by this method, that would somewhat explain how Kirito was able to basically say no to death and come back to life. In his mind, he basically convinced his unconscious that his body hadn't died yet, thus giving him the opportunity to complete the game. So, with all that said, do you guys really think a total immersion style game like Sword Art Online is that far away? Or if we're even ready for it? Could our minds take living in two realities where skills would bleed from one into the other, and the prospect of dying could spell out even worse consequences than we thought? I don't know about you, but I'm pre-ordering right now. But hey, those are just my thoughts. I'll see you guys next time. A special shout out and thanks to everybody who gave me all the awesome ideas for anime in-depth looks that I'm going to be doing in the future. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. All of the ideas you guys gave me were really good, and I'm working on all of them right now. It's just, it's going to take a while. I mean, I have to watch the anime, I need to do research, I need to get my thoughts together, so it's going to be a lengthy process. Just stick with me, okay? The only reason I got this one out so easily and quick is that I had already watched Sword Art Online. But anyway, it, anime in-depth looks, they're coming, so watch out for them. And before you guys leave, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. So, in Sword Art Online, the first season, what was the real tearjerker for you? When Yui disappeared or when Asuna died? Go ahead and leave a comment down below which one you believe was more sad. And also, got any more good anime in-depth look ideas? Leave them down below in the comments as well. And all your thoughts, comments, and all those other good things about this video, leave them down there too. Or hey, personal message me for all I care. I mean, I love feedback from you guys. I'll see you next time.